The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host, as once more we go into the breach, dear friends. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And uh, what do we have? Let's go ahead and update this just to make darn turt and cheer. We're off four points on the S&P cash, down 77 on the Dow, down 23 on the NASDAQ. Russell's off a buck 50. Look at crude, down a buck. Uh, gold, uh, down 20. Silver, $14.88, down 36 cents. And, of course, uh, we start looking at what I spent a lot of time with, which is the dollar, uh, up uh, 20, eh, we'll call it 24 cents, 96.80. Doesn't seem like, no matter what you call it, simoleons, greenbacks, all the different names, everybody wants a dollar, and they want, in God we trust, stamped on the front of it, and then sissy dollars, real American dollars. 3.5 billion shares as we start to show again. We've been talking about how light the volume's been this week. And we've got earnings tomorrow, and that may just be a hurry up and wait. I haven't seen a uh, very good um, signal either to be long or short, although we could get one of those at any minute if we actually got some market movement, either up or down. Generally, the thing not to be when the volume comes and gets very light, is to be short. The reason why is uh, if there's not a lot of volume and the market starts going up, they can run you out fairly quickly. And uh, hence, the old chestnut, don't be short a quiet market. Um, so we were just kind of hanging around at these levels, just uh, under the 8,000 level on the uh, NASDAQ uh, composite. And uh, just under 2890, and we've been playing around there for a few days. Uh, the super light volume, we're going to look at a lot of charts that are at make or break. So when we get those earnings in the morning, you can start looking at them. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, okay. Got a lot of stuff going on, but doesn't seem to be moving the market much. Uh, you can email me at path at tfnn.com. You can uh, call me at 877-927-6648 and anything, because it's going to be kind of a quiet day, although uh, we are, it won't be one to miss, because we are going to be showing lots of stocks at make or break, and uh, this will be your primer for what to do probably tomorrow after the earnings and Monday. So it's going to, business is going to pick up. Um, this is just the lull before the storm, but, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. I don't think I have a lot to actually whine about. Um, of course, uh, Friday, as we said, uh, tomorrow, which is Friday all, all day long, by the way, uh, JP Morgan and Wells Fargo. And of course, then we go to Monday. We got Citigroup and Goldman Sachs, and that kind of starts kicking it off. Starts getting really hot and heavy uh, out to the 19th on options expiration. And then the deluge comes starting that Monday after. So it's going to be busy, busy, busy. It's time to make sure that you got all your ducks in a row, got everything working. Uh, if you got doctor's appointments and stuff, you know, today's the day because uh, business will pick up. Okay, uh, anything else going on here? Well, I wanted to get a little history in, and we're going to get right into charts in the next segment. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is nothing but history repeating, and on this day in 1985, almost exactly two years after joining Apple, John Scully from Pepsi 
ask Steve Jobs to step down as the head of Macintosh division at Apple Computer Board Meeting. With the backing of the computer's other executives, Jobs is stripped of nearly all responsibilities at Apple. Why Jobs retains the title of chairman, he has no authority and eventually leaves Apple. I think in 1987, if I remember right, he eh, didn't have much to do. Um, went and started a couple of different companies, got involved, uh, of course, in animation and some other stuff. Uh, to me, the uh, the very interesting parable on this uh, is for other CEOs. Was, uh, I guess we can probably talk about a handful of them uh, that are revolutionaries. But as soon as their revolution stops, what do they do? Once they uh, evolve and their products evolve from year to year and aren't uh, brand new and that, and they actually have to get the books to work out and they have to actually make a, a company that has cash flow. Um, Steve Jobs knew almost nothing about actually running a business. He was very good at running products. So I do kind of feel in the small way in, in what I was involved with, that was it. I never wanted to be in there looking at the beans, counting them, moving the black ones over here and the white ones over here and the orange ones over there. Um, in fact, Monty Python had a great introduction to the, is it the meaning of life? I think it is. About, uh, it's, it runs about 18 minutes uh, about accountancy and accountants uh, uh, rating yet another company. It's one of the best short films I think ever. In fact, they were very mad at Terry Gilliam for doing it because he used up a lot of the cash that they were going to use for the rest of the movie. It was supposed to be like a five-minute short turned into 18 minutes. It is beautiful and breathtaking in its scope of business and its takedown of business, if you ever get a chance to see uh, see that. Um, I want to say, yeah, it's the meaning of life. But it runs like about 20 minutes into the movie. And, of course, uh, if you watch till the end, you'll get to watch uh, Mr. What was his name? Mr. Paraquat. Mr. Uh, it's the stuff you put on railroad ties. Creosote, Mr. Creosote, at the very end, who has to eat one more wafer thin chocolate. Just wafer thin, sir. I remember <laughs> being, that may have grossed me out worse than any other uh, little bit I've ever seen in movies, but you know, that and the human centipede. Don't, don't ever watch that if you ever want to sleep again. That's, uh, that's Nazi scary. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's interesting. Anyway, yeah, back in 1985, um, Steve Jobs got probably the best gift he could ever get. That was being forced out and having to learn to run companies in the 90s before he would return to Apple in 2003 and rise from the ashes. But that was it. Um, narcissistic? Probably... Um, a few other problems out there. And some say, yeah, I want to get into it. On this day in 1985, when we come back, charts, charts, did I say charts? And more charts. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're back. We're going to look at a handful of these uh, companies today. Actually watching there. Oh, I'll get this out here during the next break. I'm actually trying to do two things at one time during the break. I got a plumber here. I got somebody that needs something emailed to them. And I'm doing a uh, radio show, podcast. What do you call this thing that we do? Anyway, uh, we'll get uh, into it here a little bit. Advanced Auto Parts uh, looks like it's headed back up to the previous high. It's into a spike. That spike is uh, February 19th came in with 3.4 million shares at 178.69. We've got to 180.34 today, just uh, 430,000 shares so far, though. So, again, everybody's trying to uh, get out on the tips of their skis. And uh, if there's a surprise, a lot of these uh, will be smacked fairly hard. Uh, if they go higher, probably not much risk to the high side. Uh, so eh, I'm uh, kind of a little bearish here in the risk reward. You probably have a 60% chance or 65% chance these go higher tomorrow, uh, but that's a little. Maybe they go up 1% where they could, if we have some really bad earnings Friday and Monday, they could go down 3 or 4%. So the risk reward actually pretty poor. Axon Enterprises, AAXN. Which is the February 26th high, $60.30, 1.7 million shares, uh, getting into it today with 164,000 shares. The volume isn't light, it's virtually non existent. Now, one of the stocks that actually is making kind of an interesting low out here, but hasn't issued a buy sign yet, is Accordia Therapeutics. This biotech, A-C-O-R is the symbol, first found a low on December 21st with two, uh, just under 2 million shares at 12.86. Pierce that with 1.2 million shares, bounced a little bit. Uh, this last leg has been one of the ones that you really like. Came back on light energy for the most part today. You're back under those previous lows with just 320,000 shares so far. So any kind of move uh, and close higher, as long as the volume remains uh, light, is 
one of these that you want to keep a close eye on as a possible buy if you're looking at biotech and buy your tech. Autodesk, uh, this thing's given a couple symbol of signals that it was going to roll over. It never did. It's kind of gone up. They've run it um, by running it shorts a few times. Uh, it's gone above its previous high of March 1st. That was 169.05. It had uh, 3.8 million shares, got through it on 1.6 million shares yesterday. It's 921,000 shares today. As I said, uh, a lot. Okay. Uh, anyway, light, light, light. Uh, IAG uh, has been bouncing around this $45 level. Uh, the first low on November 6 came with 7.5 million shares. You got uh, mid fives and mid sixes in February. Uh, today, you're back above that 45 level to 45.82 with 2.7 million shares versus that 7.5. Um, you know, risk, like I said, risk reward, probably not that good. 48 on the upside and it could, um, well, you actually could get that $40 level, which is a high volume gap down on to, to February 14th. Alexa, isn't it? Yeah, Alexion Pharmaceuticals. Uh, I think this is a longer term one. Yeah, going back into its high of September 28th, 140.77. That was with 3 million shares. This one's got one of the a few candlesticks out here that's interesting today. And that is kind of a dark cloud cover uh, reversal on this one. Um, volume, you know, 600,000 shares so far compared to the 1 million shares on the upside yesterday. Uh, but uh, we don't have a lot of signals. So anything you find is probably of value in this market. Amazon continues to creep uh, with the uh, creepy CEO of Amazon. Ooh, somebody, I forget what I was watching last night, but it was a news article on there. And it was retweeting, or it was going through his, his text mails to his girlfriend. Ah, what are these people thinking? I, I don't know why people think some bizarre stuff like that is sexy. But now every time I see an Amazon package with that nice little thing, eh, I feel a little dirty, like maybe I need to get a shower. But uh, that's, that's probably just me. Amazon, four days going sideways. Light volume today of 1.9 million shares. Four days ago, we had 3.7 million shares. So continue to sit on the fence. Uh, to, 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 what else do we have? Apache. <laughs> it's not only me. <laughs> I, I'm glad. If, uh, so some things you just shouldn't do. You shouldn't read those uh, uh, texts between him and his girlfriend. And you shouldn't watch Human Centipede. Either one of those. You just... You can't scrub hard enough with a Brillo brush to get it off of you. Apache, uh, four days going sideways. Again, crude starting to pull off today. We may be very close to the highs for a while in crude. Don't see much other than a doji today in the XLE. Uh, but there's plenty of supply coming on in the U.S., no matter what they say over there. From the Saudis, there's plenty of supply coming from the United States, and that's where it matters. Uh, but a very low volume doji out here today. Keep a close eye on that XLE. Tomorrow, if it starts to roll, I think that may be the start of something big. A wonderful friendship with me and shorts and energy, but we do not know. Uh, to, 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 let's see if we have any other big names out here. BA, Boeing, or I'm not going and it's retesting, it's lows out here. So if you were thinking about buying Boeing, you got some fairly decent risk reward. 361.52 was the March 22nd low, came in with 10 million shares today, 4.4 million shares. So uh, if you're a big bull and you think you need to own Boeing, uh, the risk reward probably not going to get any better. You just don't want it closing any lower than probably yesterday's low. 
which was uh, 362, 50, uh, yeah, 36292. I don't see any reason to go out and buy it today, but uh, if the market looks up tomorrow morning, it's probably bottomed. Uh, Baba, Ali Baba, um, continues to just hang out these at these levels. As we said, one more close below a three by three or a nine day moving average. Let's see what the three by three looks like. Yeah, I mean, we're right on it, but you, we get any closes lower. Uh, look at Baba to really start moving lower. We got a lot of stocks to look at, a lot of time. For you to give me a call at 877 927 6648. We got some emails in too. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TF and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And hopefully we're back. Just trying to juggle too many things at one time. But uh, I got them all taken care of, so we're going to go and start looking at uh, some emails that we had coming in. First question is Nancy asking uh, about a swing point for a trade on Microsoft. Um, risk reward is probably not what you're thinking about, but it's certainly down at about a hundred bucks. Um, yeah, it could pull 20 back 20%. I don't see anything. 
The other one would be maybe at 110. Uh, but again, these are, uh, I mean, these things are up here. And again, one more close below a three by three displaced moving average. And it could make one of the strongest bear cases uh, that you've seen in a long time. Now, again, 110 into the world, no. Even 101, no. But you could certainly get to 98 uh, in a down market. And uh, again, I think you only have one day to go to start thinking about that. So I would wait till tomorrow. But right now, if I had my druthers, uh, there are a lot of short, uh, stocks that I'd like to be short, but I would probably rather be short Microsoft um, than long until it does some kind of pullback. Uh, now, um, thanks to Pat, who reminds us that next Friday is Good Friday and the market will be closed. So we don't actually have expiration uh, on the 19th. It's actually on the 18th. And then we get a three-day weekend. Hoorah! Hoorah! Thanks, Pat. I knew it was coming up, and I every time I think about it, I forget to write it down, but I will not forget it again. Uh, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, put a message in the den. Uh, let's see what else out here. Bed, bath, and below. Testing this uh, 75 high. That's the November 2nd high. And, again, people are buying this because Apple's going higher. They're assuming the two are linked. I got into the November 2nd high of 2018 that was at 7511 that had 4 million shares. And, of course, we got into it with uh, 2.4 million shares. So, again, any kind of um, downside in the market, and you could see a race to about 6250 on Best Buy. I kind of like that. It, Best Buy between now and... Uh, August generally has uh, a fairly bearish bias uh, waiting for products to come out and see what they're going to look like for the fall. Uh, BMC Holdings, BMCH, no, BMCH, BMC Stock Holdings. March 1st, 1976 with 650,000 shares, breaking through it today with 533. That one actually may get enough volume by the end of the day. See what else we do have. Two, 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 two. What's C and Q? Why does that ring a bell? Canadian uh, Natural Resources. That's why it does. Uh, and of course, uh, two, two. what do we have out here? Um, Seven million shares on December third. Twenty nine dollars thirty four cents. Seven point seven million shares yesterday. Three million shares today. Just one point three million shares. It just spiked and came back in there. And again, these will develop into much more bearish patterns tomorrow if we continue uh, to roll lower. Right now, uh, to, 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 let's go back here. We're off this four points on the S&P cash. 77 on the Dow. Let me update those because I'm always worried that, yeah, 79 on the Dow. NASDAQ's off 25 and the Russell's down two. To, to crush. We've been talking about crush a couple of days. Watching these uh, uh, SMHs, they are extremely vulnerable, uh, and you've got generally a couple bucks up on them, and maybe twice that or more down uh, over the next few days. So the risk reward is pretty weak to the upside. You've got a nice gap down here at 41 bucks. Uh, hit today with 200,000 shares at 44.34 compared to that November 2nd high that had 2.7, almost 2.8 million shares at 43.25. So you are you are above it, but you've had no volume for about a week. What else do we have out here that we're looking at? CVX, which is Chevron. We've talked about this energy sector looking weak for a while. I think everybody thought that the uh, formula winter, uh, winter summer formula rollover uh, was a uh, reprieve in the energy markets, and they were going to do nothing but go higher. I don't see that. They look fairly weak. But again, I suspect tomorrow will be the answer. 
with Chevron. It's gone really, man, you had a little pop up here on the 8th. Uh, and you had 5.5 million shares going into a 6.5 million share. I think there's a uh, much better uh, short bait out here than Chevron. But um, it is one of them. Dish Networks. Uh, to, 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 um, Dish Networks is looking at a 850,000 share uh, high today. That goes back into a 5.5 million share high on November 2nd and a November 28th high with 2.7 million shares. So 850,000 shares is nothing. And of course, uh, most of these have had very weak uh, energy off those December 26th, 24th, 23rd lows. This one was the December 27th. But uh, they've all gone up and had fairly weak energy. Dick's Sporting Goods. Uh, now, this one is going into its recent high of March 1st that had uh, 2.8 million shares at $40.87. 1.7 million shares yesterday, so a million shares light. Today, 1.15 million shares with an hour and 40 minutes to go. Delphi, D-L-P-H, Automotive. It's uh, been testing its previous 3 million share high. That was on February 22nd, uh, 2404 for the price. We are above it at 2471 at, at the peak today, kind of pulling back. I don't think it's going to get underneath that previous high. Uh, the interesting part of this is the 800,000 shares so far today. So let's say it does a million or 1.2 million. Still going to be very light on that 3 million share high. To, 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 to Etsy. Um, after its gap, it's gone nothing but sideways. Little lower, low, uh, little higher lows and lower highs. That one's probably getting ready to bust a move one way or the other. No significant move then. Talking about bust a move, Fossil, which did get back up to 32.17 on short squeezes has come all the way back down. Uh, it is now testing its February 14th low at $12.98. Uh, and that had, uh, what, uh, 12 million shares too. Got into that with 2 million shares yesterday. So at least there may be a bottom for Fossil coming in here. And that may even be a long-term bottom. We do not know yet. But watch that the next couple of days, too. We'll be back. Got lots of stocks to look at. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. back uh down five got a question that uh, is basically political which is um the uh, new attorney general and what he said about um basically the cia the nsa and the previous administration spying yeah i don't know if that's going to have any implications so far uh, you go back to 1973 we got kind of some parallels which is uh, people spying on candidates uh, now that you know it's out there in the and we've actually had them say it yes they were spying on a candidate and basically that's the problem that caused Watergate so you just wonder how far I know there's going to be seven or eight uh, referrals to the Justice Department for prosecution. But I don't know if any of those actually, I mean, those are all, you know, in in those uh, three-letter agencies. I think if it was in the Treasury or maybe some of the others, if it extends somewhere else, but I think it's kind of limited to a bunch of sickos in the government that wanted to overthrow the somebody they didn't like. And as long as that stays out of it, I don't know that that's going to have much of a uh, influence, at least for the stock market. And maybe, you know, a lot of people get up, moved up and down by politics. But, you know, yeah, I know. I know. They're just saying how bad it is. This is uh, Watergate times five. Uh, it's just going to take a long time. As uh, Mark Twain said, the... Uh, uh, a lie can go around the world twice before the truth gets out and puts its shoes on and goes out the front door. And it's just going to take a long time for these investigations to wind uh, down to the prosecutions. And then we're going to actually hear what went on. But it, uh, and you can smell it. You already know it. And, uh, and we'll just see whether or not the, you know, most of the press are probably not going to want to comment on it. So probably not going to be a a big deal for the markets. Uh, what else do we have uh, going on? Uh, to, to, okay, we looked at Fossil. Um, look at Gold Corp. I mean, these things had, oh, we got a caller. Uh, Jeff, how you doing, uh, Jeff? Uh, hi, Dave, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, great. Um, so my question, it's uh, kind of a math question, and you probably figured this out a long time ago. Um, so I do a lot of studies uh, for different setups. You know, I get ideas for different uh, trade setups, and I want to uh, do a study for myself. I make a big spreadsheet, and I look for those setups on the chart. And my question is, uh, how do you determine how many samples you need to have a statistically significant uh, sample size. So uh, I remember back in physics class when we were doing experiments, the number was in the 30s. I don't remember exactly, but members between 31 and 36. But what's more important is I can't remember how we calculated that number. <laughs> well, and, um, 
I'll, okay. I'll give you some ones I know right off the top of my head. There's about 6,000 uh, tradable stocks. Um, and you can find the calculators online. I've done it. But if you're talking about plus or minus 2%, you need a uh, you need a sample size of about 300 and let's call it 334. I use 375 uh, to get a good sample of the of a broad market, and that's why I really don't spend a lot of time looking at the Nasdaq 100 or talking about it on the show. It is way below any kind of threshold, and of course they're all um, uh, co uh, variant uh, because they're all in the same in index, which is a real problem for it. But generally, if you do about 375 um, samples of uh, a particular pattern, you're going to get probably plus or minus 2%. If you do about 325, you're going to get about plus or minus 5%. I'm sorry, what was that other number for 5%? Uh, about 325. Okay. So, you know, so, basically yeah. with a computer, if you're doing 325, it's no more effort to do 375, right? So, you know, if, you, if, you've, if you've done those, um, that's kind of it. Um, so, you know, there's, but there, there is a limit to it. I mean, you've got about 30 stocks that trade in uh, the GDX, right? You can't get any more than that. So that's your entire sample size. So if you were doing some kind of sample in a particular sector, it also matters. If you're doing it in uh, Russell, you've got 2,000 stocks. So you're probably talking about, uh, just off the top of my head, probably about 200, 225 would be a good sample size on that and a little more than 10%. But there's online calculators uh, that will do that for you if you just Google them. And they'll give you the significant well, uh, spread for the amount I'm, that you I'm, actually need. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm not. Uh, you might be thinking of a different kind of um, study. Like the kind of study I'm talking about is maybe on one uh, contract. Like say, take um, a, a soybean futures contract. And let's yeah, say that I, the, I the, think the, I the, noticed that every, uh, you know, every Friday. It always closes down. I'm just making that up. Right. So now that, I want to that, take a look at how many study, Fridays to know if, yeah. if I'm right or not. That kind of study is called a time sequence study, right? Okay. And there is a lot of work going on in those time sequence studies. But one of the problems you're going to have is uh, uh, figuring uh, the amount of days uh, and uh, taking care of uh, when... You know, sometimes that sequence is 10 days, sometimes it's seven days. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, or are you just talking about holidays? Huh? And... Yeah, I mean, you're going to have days in and out. There's a, uh, a technique uh, uh, called uh, time warp. Uh, uh, I'm going to think about it here in a second. Uh, time warp distortion. Uh, and. I've done a lot of work on that in, since Christmas. Um, but it is a way of trying to accordion the data in and out so that they all match. Uh, mine, of course, is options expiration. And sometimes there'll be you know, as, as few as 18 days. Sometimes uh, you know, with, that, with weekends and vacations and stuff. Sometimes uh, you know, 32 days. So how do you take care of all those option to options uh, expirations. And it's basically uh, an algorithm called time warp distortion. And if you want to think about it, you know, the kind of accordions, uh, I'm not, like I'm not much of an accordion, but the one that kind of comes out more at the top than the bottom, we'll come back in a second. Right. We'll answer, finish your question. Okay. And I'll look up the uh, exact name, but it's time warp distortion. We'll be back in a minute.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Are you still there, Jeff? Hello, Jeff. I'm here. Can you hear me, Dave? Yeah, I can. Anyway, I looked up the article again. I got I found a package that did it for me. But if you think of a uh, accordion, one of those ones that you can pull out uh, more on the top than the bottom, or sometimes uh, more on the bottom than the top when you're squeezing them back and forth and making music, you kind of have to do that with the data. And there are packages that do that. But it's kind of important that if, you know, whatever your pattern is, let's say it's a 10-day pattern, that you're looking at, or well, let's say it was a Gartley pattern. If the if the C to D is like 40 days, but the uh, A to or the X to A was like 10 days. Yeah, I mean, is that kind of the pattern you're looking for? There, there's got to be some level to the symmetry, and uh, uh, dynamic time warping is the way that you do that. Um, it's used a lot in voice recognition, where someone might speak slowly, or someone might speak much faster, right? So well, how do you take care of all that? And it's uh, that's the algorithm uh, that lets you kind of uh, accordion in and out the data so that you can compare apples to apples. And that is, a, uh, especially in machine learning, um, when you're doing those, you kind of need to, to do that or you can end up just with a result that looks very promising, but in practice doesn't end up working that well. 
You know what I mean? So it enforces a little bit of symmetry, but not perfect symmetry. Uh, it gives you a little fuzzying around the edges, but if you're doing and looking for some kind of pattern, um, generally without that in the stock market, your data probably is not going to work very well. But it, they, it is out there. There are a lot of papers on it, and there are packages that you can get for free on GitHub and stuff. Okay? Gone? I guess he's gone. Anyway, uh, dynamic time warping. Yep. Cool stuff. Uh, so when you can, not when you have to. We will see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Larry Pe